guys, what's up? I'm Caitlin from Leave Me Alone Plants, and today I have one of my favorite plants in my collection, my pineapple plant. Now you may not have known that you can grow your own pineapples at home, and they look gorgeous in the process. There's a couple ways that you can do it, so we'll get into all of those today. But if you have a plant already, or if you are looking to start growing one of these plants, stay tuned and I will tell you everything you need to know to keep them happy and healthy. Okay, so starting out with where I acquired this plant from, one of our local nurseries here is called the Plant Stand of Arizona. They recently mass produced, or I don't know if they grew them themselves, I'm sure they got them from a wholesaler, but they had these plants recently and as soon as I saw them on Facebook <laughs> from them, I knew that I had to go get one. I was super excited to get my hands on one because um, honestly years ago I had seen someone talk about how they were growing this little teeny tiny pineapple and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Now, of course, I got lucky being able to buy an established plant, but if you live somewhere where you don't have nurseries that carry these or you just have never been able to get your hands on one, then you are still in luck. So um, I was going to say if I had a pineapple here, but technically I do have a pineapple here. Um, so if we're looking at this pineapple, say it was a full size normal pineapple, I mean, it would still work with this one, but I'm assuming that you're going to the grocery store and buying a pineapple. As long as it has the head on the pineapple still, you can grow it right from there. Basically, all you have to do is cut the head off right at the base of the pineapple, remove all that pineapple tissue that's left on there, like the fruit tissue, remove the bottom leaves, probably like the first, oh, like one inch or two of leaves. Um, you'll be left with a little stump and then of course the rest of this crown on top. You're gonna place that stump in water. It will root up from there and I believe it's about like a week or two. Um, you'll start seeing roots form and then from there you can pot it up in soil and you will be on your way to growing a pineapple. This bottom base down here at one point was the head of just a normal pineapple and it has now grown into this plant that we have here. Now why I opted to buy this established plant as opposed to going that route, um, for me it's just the time thing. So once you cut that head off the top of the pineapple, it's going to be two to three years before it starts producing fruit. Um, as you may know if you watch this channel, I'm just not that patient of a person. I wanted a pineapple right away. Um, not even so much to eat, I just love the way that it looks on there. I almost never want to harvest this because I think it's just so adorable. Um, so, you know, depending on what you have around you locally, accessibility to these plants, um, that may be the only way to go. It's still a great option and of course it's incredibly cheap because all you're paying for is the cost of a pineapple. There's definitely a ton of more weight in depth videos on how to go that method if you're interested on YouTube, so feel free to check those out after watching the rest of this video or at least hitting subscribe. I mean, come on, throw your old bones. But now let's get into the care of if you buy one of these plants established or you have one that you've already rooted up, how do you take care of it? Well, as most fruiting plants, um, it's going to require a lot of light to put out this beautiful fruit and you know, to keep it growing and growing and getting big. So um, while I don't put this guy in direct light just because I am here in Arizona and it is very, very harsh light here, um, if you live somewhere with less harsh light, you can definitely get away with it. These leaves have a very thick cuticle on them and um, I'm sure your plant would do fantastic. Um, for me personally, I do more of an indirect bright light and that seems to get the job done with this guy. He has grown quite a bit since I have purchased him. So overall, just making sure that you are uh, giving him enough light to thrive and grow. Now as for watering, these guys um, really don't need a crazy amount of water. So I let my soil completely dry out before I go in and water him. And what you might even notice is if you're going in with too much water, these bottom leaves um, will turn yellow and kind of let you know to hey, hold off on giving him that much water. Now as for how to water them, you are just going to want to go around on the base of the soil. Um, do try to avoid coming down from the top and letting water get into this cup up here. Um, in my experience with bromeliads, which is the family of plant that this belongs to, um, is that they can get you know mold and rot in there if you go in and water into that cup. So for me, I just like to water right around the base of that, make sure that the roots get nice and soaked and you're good to go. Now speaking of the fact that this plant is a bromeliad, um, it's going to have a really unique life cycle. So bromeliads themselves, um, they're almost like a donor plant, you can think of them that way. So this big plant that you see here, this is the mother plant. 
and of course its main goal in life is to produce fruit. So it's produced this fruit, it has this main spike on here. Now what's going to happen is eventually I'm going to harvest this pineapple off of here and this mother plant is going to die off. But ideally, before that happens, what will happen is this plant will either produce another um, fruit spike out of here. Sometimes you can, you know, flower or fruit multiple times in their life cycle um, before dying back. Or additionally, what they can do is they will put out little pups, and those little pups are basically just little baby plants. You propagate those off of there, and um, they will grow into mature plants on their own. Now, if you get those pups um, and you propagate those off of the mother plant, it will be a faster growth cycle than just cutting the top off of a pineapple. Of course, in that case, you will have some kind of root tissue in there likely, so it will just be a much faster method um, for you to get more fruit growing. Now, on the contrary, say that for some reason you have this plant and it doesn't put out any pups, it doesn't put out an extra fruit shoot, another thing that you can do is actually just cut the top right off of uh, the fruit that you do harvest and then go about that uh, propagation method that I had spoke about in the beginning. So basically um, once you harvest this first fruit you have three lines of getting more fruit in the future. So if you're buying one it's definitely not a one and done deal. Um, hopefully you will get additional plants out of this one in the future. Now as for when to actually go in and harvest the pineapple itself, um, you will want to wait until the pineapple gets to be yellow. Now here in America, we're used to our commercial pineapples being um, like quite large, like probably about that big. Traditionally, um, when you're growing these uh, just in you know your home setting, they will not get that big. It's unlikely to see happen, but like I said, once you see this plant turn yellow, that is the time that you want to go in. You'll just take a big uh, cutting shear, cut this pineapple off at the base of the sucker stem, and you'll have a delicious little fruit to uh, enjoy and share with your family or just eat on your own because trust me, when I pluck this guy off of here, I mean that whole thing by myself. As for how big the plant itself can get, um, I've seen a lot of variation in this. So when I got this guy, he was quite a bit smaller than he is now, um, and he already had the fruit on the top of him. He likely won't get drastically bigger before I harvest him, but, but on the other hand, I have seen people who have these in gigantic, like, probably 30-inch pots, and they're really huge. If you're familiar with, like, what an American agave looks like, um, or pardon me, a blue agave, they, like, literally get to that size. So, um, they can get really, really large. Now, in handling these plants, bromeliads in general do kind of have just these spiky thorns on the end of their leaves, and um, the tips of them are very sharp as well, so um, you may want to opt to use gloves or just handle with care so that you're not getting attacked by this plant. And really the fact that those exist is pretty cool. The reason, of course, is that in nature, um, a plant doesn't have any way of defending itself if something wants to come up and eat it. So it has these spikes to kind of deter animals and, um, you know, other creatures aside from humans <laughs> um, from coming in and eating their fruit. So it's really just a defense mechanism. So just be careful and keep that in mind when you are around these plants. That is all I have today for this video on my lovely pine Apple, but if you had questions or comments that you want to make on this video that I did not address and you were hoping I would, please leave them in the comment section down below and I will do my very best to get back to you in a timely manner and hopefully have a good answer for you. Um, don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video informative and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.